A drive to the Horseshoe Curve is a scenic one, a winding road through a wooded valley that abruptly ends at the foot of the Allegheny Mountain Range. It was here, in 1854, that the Pennsylvania Railroad found its path over the mountains that made possible its great westward expansion. Here, too, are a series of mountain lakes that form a pleasing backdrop to this railroad marvel. Many know that these reservoirs supply water to the city of Altoona, a town founded by the Pennsylvania Railroad that one day would be home to the greatest railroad complex in the world. Few, however, know of the major challenges faced by city leaders, engineers, and builders to provide a clean and reliable water supply. At the time, major industries were built on rivers with ready access to water. Not so for Altoona, an uplands area of swampy ground with no water. It all had to be collected, stored, and piped from miles away. Indeed, the search for water would become a constant preoccupation of city officials for decades to come. Efforts to bring a water supply to city residents began in 1871. Studies showed the Katenning Gap watershed offered the best potential in terms of stream flow, elevation, and proximity to the city. And so, a small intake was built below the Horseshoe Curve. In 1888, a larger 65 million gallon impoundment was created at this site by construction of a 45 foot high dam, which is most commonly associated with the Horseshoe Curve. Known as the Katanning Point Reservoir, this reservoir later proved to be too small for a population that by 1890 had reached 30,000. Compounding the problem were flash floods that washed down pollution and debris from an active mining community and timber district in the watershed above. Floodwaters routinely deposited sediment in the reservoir, diminishing its capacity and creating dirty water for days. Mindful of the constant threat of waterborne diseases such as typhoid and dysentery, the public clamored for action. Clearly, the situation was intolerable, but no solution was in sight. Finally, city leaders turned to Charles W. Knight, a consulting engineer from Rome, New York. Like many 19th century engineers, Knight had little technical education, but gained proficiency through self-study and practical experience. Over the next 25 years, he designed a reservoir system of increasing capacity and technical sophistication. To protect Katanning Point Reservoir, Knight designed a levee system that channeled all stream flow to an intake structure. This allowed the city to divert normal stream flow into the reservoir while bypassing turbid flood water downstream in an adjacent bypass channel. For additional water supply, Knight also planned a new 350 million gallon reservoir. Known as the Impounding Reservoir, it would be filled from the overflow of the Katanning Point Reservoir and protected from flood flow by extension of the bypass channel. Completed in 1896, this 55 foot high earth embankment dam included a masonry intake structure, overflow spillway, and outlet pipes. The Impounding Dam had some of the finest examples of masonry workmanship in the area. These included a masonry overflow weir, water intake structure, spillway, and valve houses. Rock was quarried locally and hand chiseled to shape by skilled stonemasons. Of special mention is the masonry floodwater channel along Katanning Point Road. Over 110 stonecutters and masons were employed in this work from as far away as Massachusetts and Indiana. Remarkably, this mile-long masonry channel was completed in only four months and remains in excellent condition to this day. By 1900, the city water supply was again inadequate for a population doubled in size and made worse by chronic drought conditions. Water restrictions and rationing were the order of the day. Droughts also restricted the work of the Pennsylvania Railroad shops, which were then using 10 million gallons of water per day. At times, water restrictions forced the company to haul water from out of the area by train into its shop complex. Lack of water threatened the viability of both the city and the railroad. In a desperate bid to find new water sources, both the city and Pennsylvania Railroad studied every mountain stream between Blue Knob and Tyrone as a possible water source. These competing interests often resulted in litigation over water rights. For its part, the railroad created its own water company and embarked on an aggressive water program of building water reservoirs and installing transmission mains. For city leaders, 
an immediate crisis was at hand, and in 1902, Altoona turned again to Engineer Knight for a solution. After reviewing many options, Knight concluded that a third dam, larger than any previous considered, be built below the impounding reservoir. Known as Lake Altoona, the new reservoir would have a storage capacity of 800 million gallons and be suitable for a population of 100,000. However, an old problem again confronted Knight, how to bypass floodwater pollution around his massive reservoir and made more difficult by a small intervening tributary known as Scotch Gap Run. His solution was a series of ingenious hydraulic structures that would preserve the water quality and capacity of the new reservoir. By means of a diversion tunnel at the impounding reservoir, debris-laden floodwater would be discharged into a large settling dam on Scotch Gap Run. The settled water could be discharged into either Lake Altoona or bypassed into a channel around the reservoir. This was accomplished by a unique intake and overflow spillway. Lake Altoona Dam was a large construction project in its own right, involving 500,000 cubic yards of earth embankment, a concrete core wall, and large intake structure. At the time, one of the largest dams in the state, it was constructed over seven years from 1906 to 1913. Beyond all of the engineering challenges and practical difficulties related to these monumental efforts, are the people who built and operated the system. Hundreds of workers, skilled and unskilled alike, of all races, creeds and nationalities were employed in these works. This period was also marked by a historic transition in construction methods from manual labor to draft animals to steam-powered equipment. These rare photos, commissioned by Engineer Knight, are a remarkable record of this time and the men and machines who built the Altoona Reservoir system. A constant throughout this period was City Water Superintendent Sam Gailey, whose career exactly matched the construction time frame of the reservoir system. This dedicated public servant oversaw the great expansion of the water system and supervised the construction of the reservoirs and distribution system. With the completion of Lake Altoona in 1913, the city had secured its future with over a billion gallons of water available for growth and development. For this reason, a debt is owed to the decades of citizens who voted for every loan and bond issue that made the work possible. A $100 million investment if replicated today. Over the next century, the reservoir system would be operated, maintained and improved by many faithful stewards, including the Altoona Water Authority. The Altoona Reservoir System was 30 years in the making during the dawn of the Industrial Age and the unparalleled growth of the country's major railroad and the city it relied upon for its workforce. It provides the perfect backdrop to the world-famous horseshoe curve. But the breathtaking beauty of the vista belies its century-old functionality, the provision and protection of abundant water easily delivered to the valley below. Just as it was meant to do, the system still functions as originally designed. And now, with the formal designation as an American Water Landmark by the American Water Works Association, the Altoona Reservoir System has achieved the prominence it deserves.